So welcome to this quick update video where I want to give you a rundown of a small project that I've started working on recently, which is a Blender add-on. Now, the, the main reason I'm recording this video now and sort of putting it out to the engineering skills audience now is really because I want to gauge your interest in this particular project. I need to know whether or not a sufficient number of you out there are interested in me continuing to work on this and potentially producing more content around this. Um, because it's not core engineering, it's not what most of you are here for. And I'm very, very aware of that. And I'm always reluctant to drift too far away from um, you know, core engineering content. And so that's why I'm sort of basically trying to gauge your level of interest. Um, are you interested, one, in a Blender add-on that's going to make sort of structural modeling um, a little bit easier uh, for you in Blender? Uh, and two, are you interested in knowing how to do this yourself um, and me potentially producing a course for you all around how to build this add-on? Um, so that's really the thing I want to get from this video. And at the end of the video, I'll point you towards a place on the Engineering Skills website where you can um, basically sign up to what is essentially a wait list, but really it's a way for me to gauge the level of interest in this project um, and I'll also probably embed a forum thread there as well so that you can leave any comments or suggestions that you have um, directly there on that sort of that sort of page so I'll, I'll come to that towards the end so I suppose let's just um, sort of talk through what is the problem that this add-on is potentially going to try and solve I use a lot of blender in my courses because it's a really accessible way for people to generate 3d geometry you don't need an expensive license you don't need great Grasshopper or other commercial software, you can do an awful lot of the exact same things using Blender. And that's one of the reasons I like it. So we're looking here at a very, very basic Toberon truss, the type of thing that you would generate in a matter of seconds, less than a minute or two in Blender. Um, and we've done a lot of this kind of modeling for other engineering skills courses. Um, but we always run into a bit of a, an issue or a little bit of friction when it comes to taking the data that defines this structure um, and getting it out. Now, it's not a hard problem to solve. Really, all we have to do is um, jump over into a scripting window inside Blender, write a little script, run the script, and we export the geometry, and that's fine. But I've always thought that that would be a really nice use case for an add-on, for a, a structural modeling initially and but potentially a structural analysis add-on all within Blender because of course we have access to um, writing Python in Blender so it's kind of a natural fit. So that's what I started working on. So what I've got here is this little structure here and I want to demonstrate a little workflow that I've just put together which uses the add-on and um, but does, does the structural analysis externally for now because sort of if I do continue with this project sort of first phase first iteration is going to be to generate a, an add-on that really makes modeling and extracting structural data from your model um, definition data, making that a lot easier. So let's say we have this structure here and we want to define materials for the different elements. We want to define cross sections, supports, forces, etc. And we'd like to export all of that information out of Blender, define it all in Blender, export it out of Blender so that we can have a separate Jupyter notebook that will just basically import that CSV file that was generated and just do the analysis for us. So as I say, we're partitioning the structural modeling slash problem definition in Blender and the structural analysis and visualization currently outside of Blender. So let's just have a quick look here at a quick workflow. So I'll just put that over to one side. So that's our model on the left. And I've just written a little uh, script here on the right, um, a little Jupyter notebook that will take the data that the add-on generates and then just process it. So uh, if I bring in the end panel here, the add-on has got a working name, Structure Works. So here it is here. Uh, we've got the analysis type, first of all, is the first thing we'll define. So we'll just work down through using the add-on here, right? So the first thing you would do is you would set what kind of analysis type do you want? Now, currently, it's just set up for a 3D truss analysis, which is this, this thing, basically a space frame. And um, what we could imagine, we could change that to a 2D truss and we would have, um, um, let's say the number of restraints per node we have to define would automatically change. I haven't set that up yet, but that's easy to do. But we could then imagine expanding into a, a, a scenario where we could define a 2D beam and frame structure and all of the associated problem definition information or a 3D beam and frame structure definition or problem definition. Now, we've done all of this previously through just writing scripts and running those scripts sort of on an ad hoc basis as we're trying to export data. But this is a much cleaner way of doing it. So the first 
thing that we would need to do here is we can imagine this file having many different meshes and objects in it depending on how you you know how you structure your blender files and, and what your workflow is in blender so the first thing we'd like to do is determine what is the object what is the structure that we're going to base our analysis on so i'll go into object mode here and i'll just use the eyedropper tool here to select my object now when i do that the add-on now knows that's the object that i want to base my analysis on and so what I can do is if I go back into edit mode, we can see that we've kind of itemized all of the nodes and all of the members. Now, this isn't information you probably need for the most part, but it's kind of easy to extract. And so I've put it in here. So these are all the nodes in the structure and the, we can select down through different nodes if you want to. Again, it's a kind of a work in progress. I'm trying to work out what, what is useful to show in the interface and what is not. So that's the first thing. Then what we want to do is define some materials. So I've gone ahead and defined a couple of materials here already, but so we've got steel, we've got a we've got you know some standard parameters for steel again this can probably be tidied up how we're visualizing this i'm not specifying the units for you you're being as the user of the add-on you're required to keep control or track of the units you're using so everything in here is currently in uh, units of newtons and meters so some of the numbers are pretty big and um, so you can define a material quite easily to save time here i've defined a steel material an aluminium material but to define a new material you would just add a material slot come down here and basically just put in your different, give it a name, put in your different parameters. So that's how you would add materials. So then we want to go ahead and assign materials. So we can go into, well, we're in edit mode already. So if we wanted to assign materials, I'll just assign everything steel right now, right? So I'll go to select everything with A, and then I will simply with steel selected in the add-on, I'll hit assign. And now everything in that truss is going to be assigned the steel material. We can check that by deselecting it um, and then selecting again while steel is selected in the drop in the list here we can see that we've selected all of the elements if for example i wanted you know randomly a few a few elements to be a different material i could come in and i could assign those to aluminium deselect everything and then check what is steel well obviously not everything anymore uh check what is aluminium and we've got these guys here. So basically it works the same way that um, material selection, it mimics the behavior of standard material attribution within Blender, uh, if you're familiar with that. So let's go back to assigning everything to steel here. Next, we want to assign some cross sections. So again, to save a little bit of time, I've already specified some cross sections in here. So I'm just going to give everything the same cross section here. So I'll assign everything the bracing cross section. So I'll hit assign. And again, we can go ahead and just make sure that it's assigned correctly um, by checking to see if anything is the column. Nope. Is anything a beam? No. And then bracing, everything should light up. And it does. Okay. So that's our sections defined. And again, adding a new section is just as simple as um, basically hitting the plus button, coming in here, giving your section a name. I don't know. Beam 2. Um, and then assigning all of the different properties to uh, to beam two. Now, obviously, I've gone ahead and put in additional properties here that aren't relevant for a space frame analysis. But again, as I say, I'm kind of playing around here to see what works and, and where I want this thing to go. So now we've assigned, I can get rid of that beam two. We don't use that. So now I've assigned sections. We can come on down to restraints. So where do I want this thing to be restrained? Well, I go into nodal uh, selection or vertex selection mode. And basically, I'll just select these nodes now i want those to be restrained uh, in the x y and z direction translational restraints because this is a 3d space frame and so it's three degrees of freedom per node so with see these are just buttons that we can select so we can say we want ux ui and uz to be restrained we will add those restraints to the selected nodes and there we have them so we can collapse that down next is applied forces so let me see I, we can include self-weight or not include self-weight i'll include it here um, let me clear all these let me see so there's one thing i need to change i need to make sure that that goes to zero uh, when we select a new mesh so let's say i want to add a horizontal force of 2000 newtons in the positive x direction to let's go into top down view here and I'll just box select these nodes. This is this is one of the reasons I, why I like modeling, doing structural modeling in Blender, because once you get familiar with the selection, modeling and manipulation tools, it's super easy um, and I think very intuitive. So we want to add a horizontal load of 2000 newtons to those nodes. So we'll just hit add selected and they're added straight away. We want to add a vertical, 
let's go with a vertical load of 5,000 newtons. So we'll zero, we'll zero that guy out and we'll make that minus 5,000 and we will add selected. All right, we can, little things, we can sort them. Um, if there were, if we were defining loads on the same node in different operations we'd end up with two different entries for that node here but we can consolidate those by just hitting the consolidate button and after that we're done we've defined our model now that's all the add-on does for now right it just allows us to define this information and export it so we can specify where you want to export it i've already specified the file path to be um, the same file path as uh, our same location as this jupyter notebook uh, we can give it a model a file name which is model data it, which is what this notebook expects to find um, in the same folder. We could add a timestamp if we want. If you're running multiple analyses and you don't want to overwrite the data that you just exported with a new set of data, you would add a timestamp and that would just to put a timestamp in the file name. So you wouldn't, every time you export new data, you won't override the previous data because it won't have the same name. So we won't bother with that for now and we'll just hit export. And that will export a CSV file, which this Jupyter Notebook is now going to essentially take in. So if I then come in here and just simply restart and run all the cells again, we can see that we have our structure. So we've got our structure shown here. Now we can do things like show the forces that we've added. We can increase the arrow scale so we can see what forces we've added we can show force labels if we like all the usual so if you've seen me build in other in other courses so this isn't part of the add-on itself this is just a you know the standard modeling we would do inside of um inside of our jupyter notebook just some nice fancy plotting and matplotlib so you get the idea the the, the the key here is to generate the model and the information over on the left um, and then in a nice easy way export that in a single file over here so that we can write a notebook that expects that file and that's what I've that's what I've done here and um, so you've got you know all the standard stuff here we've got the uh, deflected shape of course you can play around with this and you know do all the usual good stuff with widgets to uh, change the uh, change the visualization but you get the idea at this stage and of course you can do the uh, the axial force diagram and add all the nice little niceties like changing the the force range and all that good stuff so this isn't really the subject of the discussion here this is just a nice little um, notebook that you can use okay the question is this one do you want to know how to do this if you don't already do you want me to produce a course that is going to walk you through the build process of how you do this in blender it's actually a lot easier than you might think to do this and if you use blender anyway the ability to write add-ons to streamline workflows for yourself whether it's structural analysis or whatever else you use blender for and um, the ability to write add-ons is, is is really nice i can see a lot of potential there for improving my own workflows um so that's the first thing do you want me to show you how to do this in the form of a course on engineeringskills.com the next thing then is uh well you know if, do i keep working on this you know is there utility in continuing continuing to expand this expanding it to a you know to handle different structures um maybe taking all of this data visualization all this stuff over in the jupyter notebook and bringing it in here so maybe we import results back into the add-on and we visualize directly in the 3d viewport that would be pretty cool and then of course the the obvious thing that you would probably do then at that point is say to yourself well why take anything outside blender at all why not just do it all in blender um, and do the structural analysis in blender because we've written plenty of courses and plenty of code um, and there's plenty of code in the engineering skills library uh, which you know does all of these analyses without any any bespoke libraries or you know without using open seas or um any of the other libraries that are tricky to get running inside of blender you can just write all this up in raw python and we've got lots of courses to show how to do that so that's really it i'm kind of it's kind of uh, an open question right now whether or not to spend more time on it and in addition to that whether or not to produce content educational content around it to show you guys how to do this so that's really what i'm looking for your feedback on and um, while i'm here sure i'll go through another another uh, very quick structure or just show a quick structure and um, so for example i will come in here turn that guy off bring this guy on now this is one of the reasons why i really like blender because you can do things like model structures like this that are 
you know, they're quite complex structures, but they're very, very easy to model in Blender. So here's a simple roof structure. Let's go to the process and just see how quick and easy it is to not model this, but to define this as a structural model. And then it, with one button push, we can just run the analysis over on the right hand side here. So we'll quickly go down through this again. We will select a new object, which is now going to be, let's go into, let's go into object mode. We'll select this guy. That's a roof and uh, materials. I'm just gonna make, let me see, I'll make, I'll make everything. Let's go with steel for this. So we'll say assign everything steel first. So we'll assign that, deselect, select. Okay, that's fine. And then just for a bit of variety, let's assign these supports, these guys, as the different material. For I mean, it wouldn't make sense to do this in reality, but I just wanna show you defining or assigning two different materials to a model. So we got this guy and let's do that. And so now with aluminium selected, we'll assign that, deselect everything and just make sure everything is assigned. Perfect. We'll come on down to sections. We'll just let everything, let me see, let's let everything be a bracing element. That's just got a small cross sectional area. We will do assign, that's fine. And then these guys, we will make these a different section. Another thing that we could do with this add-on is we could also, you know, have the ability to define load cases and load combinations here within the add-on and then have that automatically just be processed over on uh, over in our Jupyter notebook. That would be pretty cool as well. So we'll assign those the column section. Okay, that's fine. Um, restraints, we will, this is an easy one. So we'll just add four points of restraint here, here, here. And here, we'll see, I need to get those to clear out when I, the previous restraints from the previous structure to clear when I change the object. That's something I can do fairly easily. Right, so we will say they're restrained in the X, Y, Z direction. We'll add those restraints, that's fine. In terms of applied forces, we will clear those. We won't apply any forces other than the self weight of the structure. We'll export that. Now in exporting that, we've overwritten, the, because I didn't add a timestamp, we'll have overwritten the, the geometry file or the definition file from the previous structure. So now when I run this code again, it will run for a brand new structure. So let's just try that. Give it a second, it's a larger structure, so it's gonna be a little bit more demanding. Here we go. So there we have it. So here's our structure. A little bit slow to uh, a little bit slow to visualize and change as we uh, as we rotate it because obviously I'm I'm replotting it every time I change a widget, which you get the idea. We have a nice deflected shape here, and um, of course you can dig into all these results um, and find out you know what are your maximum deflections. Um, you've got your axial force diagram. We can turn those into stresses and see is anything yielded. You know all that good stuff that would follow on after an initial structural analysis. So there you have it. So that's the uh, that's where we're up to. I think there's some utility in this. I think there's an awful lot more road to travel with it. There's an awful lot more we could do with this um, add-on. I mean it could become a fully featured you know structural analysis add-on for Blender. That would be really, really cool. A lot of effort, a lot of time, but um, a lot of learning in there as well for both you and me. Um, so that's something I'm really interested in doing, but only if you guys, the engineering skills audience, are interested in it. And um, that's really the sort of litmus test for me. And that's why, yeah, as I say, I'm producing this video to go, sort of get your, your feedback. So speaking of feedback, let me jump over to uh, the uh, website for a second. Okay, so over on engineeringskills.com, um, what you can do, obviously I will, I will have links. If you're receiving this video in an email, there'll be a link in the email to the appropriate page. If you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link in the um, comment, not the comments, in the description on YouTube, which will direct you to the page. But I'll just I'll just say from for here, if we scroll to the bottom of any of the pages on engineering skills, what you'll find is this little page here, Blender add-on. Now I'm not gonna click on that because I haven't built the page yet, right? It doesn't go anywhere. But that's where you'll be able to find a link to the page, right, at any point in time. So if you go there, there will be on that page a email box where you can add your email. If you want me to keep working on this and you want more content here, I suppose, let's say specifically, if you're interested in a course on this, how to build add-ons for Blender, um, sign up to that email based on how many emails are signed into that uh, list. Um, I'll get a sense of whether or not this is a, a thing worth doing. Um, I will probably, as I say, also put a forum topic embedded directly on the page. If you've got ideas, 
that were you know what you'd like to see in the add-on and um, just put something in that forum topic you know i'll answer back i'll, I'll reply back to you and um, and you know i'll have a conversation with any anyone um, around uh, what you want to see in this add-on or if you think it's a terrible idea and you don't want me to spend time on it and you want me to just move on to the next course immediately rather than spending any time working on this tell me that too that would be useful to know too okay so that's it we'll leave it there for now and uh, yeah i look forward to hearing from you all the best